Hello and welcome back to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and you're watching Sculpt January 2019 and we're on to number 16, 16, uh, which is melancholy. Uh, so I went for this expression, uh, as you can see on the screen now. Uh, yep, had a fair bit of fun with this. I always say that, I always have fun with these things um, and always enjoy doing them, uh, still having fun. Uh, so I hope you are, and I hope you're still in the challenge. Uh, don't worry if you get behind, uh, just keep on going. And uh, it's not really about completing, uh, it's about the journey. <laughs> what a cliche phrase. But it's very true in this case. It's about learning, uh, about experiencing, and practicing. Uh, so I got my blob out and uh, started sculpting this one. Uh, sort of fairly straightforward idea. Um, I, I was thinking, it took me a long time to come up with just uh, a face that was melancholy. Um, and I was thinking of animals maybe, of um, postures again. I'm starting, I'm putting a bit too much time in and I thought I've got to cut back a bit, but I didn't. It still took me uh, a good four hours uh, with all the rendering and everything like that. Uh, so um, that didn't work. Uh, but um, I was on my Wacom Studio Pro at this time uh, and that's a bit awkward because I've lost my keyboard. I've put that down somewhere. Um, I've got a quite a naff um, keyboard that you plug in wirelessly. Uh, <laughs> you don't plug it in then, do you? Uh, and uh, so without a keyboard, um, all the shortcuts, it was a bit awkward. So I thought I need something where I can just uh, get a blob and start sculpting. And I thought a face expression and it's good. I need to keep practicing. Uh, faces because I'm not good enough and um, I had loads of trouble with the eyes again getting the right size and you can see here in fact you can probably see here that I'm having trouble in Blender 2.8 because every time I went back to the move tool after scaling it uh, undid my scale and <laughs> so that was what all that repetition was about I still got it wrong in the size of the eyes they look way too big there uh, but whilst you're doing it you just can't see these things it's funny really and that's often the case, you need to get away from your uh, sculpt for a, a few minutes and go back to it, do something else uh, and then go back to it, which is easier said than done because uh, you want to get in the zone a lot of the time as well. Uh, but um, yeah, so you can see me going back to the eyes here and thinking what is going wrong. So trying to scale them again and trying to move them into the right position. They're so much smaller than you think. Um, when you look at uh, people dissecting eyes, they sort of seem quite big bulbous things. Uh, I suppose that they're sort of pig eyes that they do, I think. Anyway, <laughs> about to ramble off on dissecting eyes there. Um, but uh, I always think they're much bigger in the skull than uh, you'd expect. And you can see, and I'm doing a hopeless job here, absolutely hopeless, uh, of trying to get the eyes the right shape. And they look absolutely hideous. Um, but I got there in the end and I think they are the right size. Um, but five across, as someone said, um, a five across is correct for the actual eyeball size, uh, not just the, um, the eye as we see it there, uh, the whole eyeball is five across. And I was always thinking, well, I, I started to think, well, is that in perspective mode or orthographic? Because it's very different, uh, but it can't really be in perspective mode. It has to be in orthographic. Uh, so I, yeah, um, I, think, I think I got it right in the end anyway. So roughly five across and uh, use your blender units to, uh, which are now meters in uh, 2.8 I think, uh, use them to sort of figure out uh, where, um, how big your shapes are and um, how they're um, lining up and stuff. Uh, so yeah, count up the units. I do that for figures as well, often, um, what is it, eight or um, seven and a half heads to a body. So I just quickly have a count. Uh, when I remember. Um, most of the time you can sort of do it by eye, but occasionally uh, your eyes let you down, um, especially when it comes to colours. That we're really bad at that. Um, I noticed when doing video editing and colour grading, uh, we're really bad at getting the colours right. My students often oversaturate colours and stuff like that is they're um, new to it. Uh, a common error. Uh, so probably be the same when uh, you're texture painting and things like that. Uh, yeah, I'm very bad at that, texture painting and finding the right colours. Uh, some people just manage to get that nice colour balance. Uh, anyway, I'm rambling off on something completely different. Anyway, uh, so working on the face for uh, quite a while and uh, I, I just thought I'm, I'm going to model the face 
I'll go fairly detailed and then sort of give it an expression where it's looking downwards. Uh, and I didn't even get to the um, eye shaping in terms of eye shaping, uh, the looking uh, with the eyeballs. I was going to texture them and things. And I did, uh, I, I wanted to practice hair as well because it's something that I just miss out a lot of the time or uh, get, <laughs> get my blob out again and just blob in some hair. Uh, but uh, I wanted to try the curve tool again uh, because I haven't done that much. Um, so um, I thought uh, this, this would be a good practice of that. Uh, it didn't go particularly well because as I got into that I thought this is taking a long time and um, I, need to, I need to move on um, because it was getting quite late in the day. So this was yesterday I was doing it and <clears throat> excuse me uh, and this morning uh, getting up to do the video uh, because these videos uh, well it's uh, um, about half an hour to record and then uh, a few minutes to edit so about half an hour to put it all on the timeline and edit and everything and uh, do all these bits and pieces and then I've got to do a thumbnail which only takes five minutes but it's, it all adds up uh, to a fair bit of time so um, it, with the hair I thought I need to uh, I've, I've given it a good practice I'll move on and then I, I kind of cheated uh, with this uh, day sculpt because um, I did the classic uh, not particularly good sculpt. Let's uh, let's crank up the values in Eevee. <laughs> so I just went on to Eevee. Right, uh, what can we have? Bloom, definitely lots of bloom. Well, actually, um, I, I toned down the bloom in the end. Uh, depth of field, depth of field, yes. Make those make the background blurry. Uh, give it a really shallow depth of field. Make it moody. Uh, backlighting. Backlighting's a, a must, uh, and you see lots of people actually doing it on. Um, in fact, uh, loads of renders have this really nice back. It does make them look quite good, but you can't see the detail particularly well. It makes it look a nice moody render uh, and quite interesting visually, but uh, in reality, uh, you can't see the sculpts. Uh, but yeah, um, not that I'm taking anything away from uh, these people, who, because actually it's quite nice. Um, to render your um, sculpts in an effective way uh, that people are sort of eye-catching and you're scrolling down Sculpt January and you think, oh, look at that one. Uh, and usually it's an, a nice render, uh, but the sculpt may not be as good as some other sculpts. Um, so I try not to do that, but uh, it was quite fun actually just cranking up the values in Eevee. Uh, what else did I do in there? Uh, a bit of subsurf scattering in there as well, uh, but I suppose that's not an Eevee thing. Uh, but it just it just softened it nicely and uh, had this sort of moody sci-fi feel, which made it feel very melancholy. I think anyway. Uh, I wasn't sure what to do with the um, bust, uh, the shoulders, uh, so I just sort of drew out some shoulders roughly, and that was interesting. Uh, yeah, there was some sort of undo glitch there again. Uh, you see, sometimes I don't even notice it, uh, but um, yeah, just I went in. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? It's interesting uh, that undo glitch is catching me out quite often. It just suddenly goes backwards and you've lost loads of detail. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, why that's happening and what's happening. Oh no, no, that's uh, me being silly. Uh, I went from smooth shading to um, flat shading. Uh, I, that's an interesting point actually, and <laughs> my mistake. I, purposely, I wanted to point out smooth shading and flat shading. Uh, it's nothing, it's not, it's not Blender 2.8's fault, it's mine. Uh, so um, I like to have it on flat shading uh, because I like to kind of see the topology and how detailed I'm going, uh, but uh, then I go across the smooth shading for the last stages just to see uh, what my cavity map and things like that are going to look like. And do you know, I didn't even do a cavity map or a normal map in this, I just rendered uh, the full, um, uh, what do you call it, the full mesh. I didn't decimate or anything. I should have probably decimated because the render took about uh, five minutes instead of two minutes that it sometimes does. But it just goes to show the power of Eevee that I'm using uh, half a million faces uh, and it's it's doing really well, uh, which is it's just brilliant. Uh, it's a, a real massive time saver. It's made my sculpt January a lot more pleasant this year, and I've been able to do more because I haven't been able to panic about doing the videos and the renders and stuff. Uh, so that's really great. So you can see I'm just setting up a very basic rig to pose my model. And someone was telling me about an idea uh, of doing, and it's quite it's quite a complicated process. Well, it sounds complicated, but um, I must give it a try, of uh, doing a remesh, so um, it's in instant mesh or um, decimate, and then shrink wrapping it 
to your high poly and then doing a multi-resolution and then when you pose it you keep uh, your information because you're uh, you're not adding any because that's when um, I always apply my um, uh, poses uh, so I apply the armature and then go back into Dyn Topo but it's not really necessary if I have a high detailed mesh uh, the problem is I can't with a high detailed mesh uh, then rig it but if I'm using the multi-resolution modifier on my uh, decimated or instant mesh remeshed uh, low poly model uh, that shrunk wrapped to my high poly model with a multi-resolution modifier you can kind of see the complexity of this and it's hard to get your head around but actually it's it's sort of making sense and that would be a way um, if I get it to work uh, so thank you to whoever said this so I really need to remember names uh, of all these people who are giving me advice I do apologize I just look at the advice and think oh that's great thank you very much uh, and then forget to uh, credit them uh, but yeah that's a very good idea you know who you are thank you very much um, but yes uh, so um, I will um, try and do a tutorial if I get that to work and uh, see if I can't um, uh, yeah figure it, figure that one out and yeah like I say if I, if I get it to work I haven't tried it yet uh, but it sounds a great idea um, and I don't know whether I'll get a chance to try it with Sculpt January because sometimes uh, you don't want to over complicate things in your head uh, when you've got a big challenge ahead of you you, you, can, you can kind of put it off or it gets a bit sort of stressful uh, and so not that that's a big challenge but it's something more to think about whilst I'm thinking about all the other things and you know how you can sort of fill up your brain with thinking about too many things uh, so having too many things on the go at once can be tough so that's probably something I'll, I'll look at after Sculpt January having said that I'm probably going to do it today or something aren't I <laughs> anyway uh, onto the hair so you can see I, I got the blob out and uh, started blobbing around with the hair uh, just to give it a sort of general shape and then started putting in some curves and it, it was quite time consuming and I was really running out of time so I thought okay I've, I've got the idea now um, and this was good practice um, but I need to render and move on um, and thanks to thanks to Evie I was able to do that nice and quickly and still make it look okay uh, I, I do like the outcome of this it's it it just sort of works but um, there are so, so many more things to do and um, I would actually like to experiment more with the hair um, you know particle systems and things which I have done about 10 years ago or something like that well I say 10 years nowhere near that long actually about four years ago Ten years ago, what are you talking about Grant uh, <laughs> uh, but um, I can't remember how you do it very well at all and sort of particles I, I tend to keep away from them just because I tend to specialize with um, character modeling and sculpting and that sort of thing or texture painting uh, I say specialize that's what I do um, but uh, it's nice to go back to these things and figure them out and um, <clears throat> uh, that's why I say it's good to master certain areas but it's also good to have a knowledge of these things so you know what they do and uh, you know what they're capable of so if you suddenly come across a render and you think oh, that would work really well with a particle hair uh, then you can quickly do it without having to panic how do I do that yeah I think that makes sense anyway uh, yeah so uh, curves for hair is sort of a sculpty method and a sort of gamey method in a sense well no it's not actually you'd use um, alpha channels uh, planes and alpha channels and things uh, but it's a similar method in terms of planes with textures on um, I was thinking of doing that but um, again you, you've got to fiddle around with the textures and you can see it's taken me quite a while with the curves just to position them and it wasn't that great um, it works but um, looks a bit more like a snake hair than, uh, than real hair so I thought I'd color it into just sort of so I could see it uh, not that I wanted to really texture it like this for the final thing um, but just so I could sort of see the outline and see what it was looking like against the face and things and I thought well I've, I've got to put some eyebrows in here and some um, eyelashes and that's uh, they're, they're, it's always those little bits which are really important that you leave to the last minute and they look a bit naff if you leave them to the last minute and you don't put much time into them which is exactly what happened here so um, eyebrows eyelashes they look they look rubbish <laughs> and uh, I, I remember looking I've, it's there's lots of people that do this sort of curve thing uh, Jan Sculpts uh, has a good tutorial about it um, but other people as well if you just type in curve hair blender uh, you'll get lots of details on this 
and lots of uh, different ways for uh, people to do eyebrows and eyelashes. Uh, Jan Sculpts comes up with a sort of stylized um, eyelashes, uh, but I'm not sure I like them for my, it's just not really my style, but I thought I'm gonna quickly do that because um, I'm, I'm running out of time. As I keep saying, running out of time, that seems to be my, uh, my go-to expression at the moment. <coughs> Uh, yes, anyway, uh, moving on. So you can see me doing the eyebrows here. I use a um, solidify modifier, a subdivision surface modifier uh, on a plane. And uh, yeah, that's it actually. Um, and I suppose I probably should have done this before rigging uh, and then I would have had the mirror, uh, but I didn't think about it. And the same with the eyelashes. Uh, you might as well just add them to your armature. They don't need to be boolean in or anything. You can add lots of things to one armature, lots of different shapes. <clears throat> so, uh, in fact, that's uh, worth saying for uh, lots of modeling and stuff. Um, you can keep them separate shapes. Um, people are often thinking about putting them all into one shape, uh, which is more optimal for games because of all the textures and things. But even then, it's not absolutely essential. I see lots on Sketchfab and you think that's brilliant. And they've just um, plonked on a shape, one shape on top of another, uh, and it still works really nicely. They, where, the, where you'll get problems is when you start animating these shapes and they might distort and move into each other and overlap each other too much. Uh, but generally for still objects, you can have lots of different uh, meshes and they can share the same texture, that's fine. So you can see uh, I'm making the eye lashes and I started off with um, a uh, single vertices and then sort of extruded it out. That was sort of the easiest way with snapping on. Um, so snap to faces and then uh, put the points in, extrude them out and I made them the same mesh so that they keep the solidify modifier and the subdivision surface modifier on and then just sort of uh, slowly shape them. Uh, but they, they kind of work but it's, it's not great. Uh, and you can see the uh, low level of detail in my eyes there as well. So I just sort of ran out of time as I was, <laughs> oh no, I said it again, uh, ran out of time. Uh, so, uh, it, I'm, like I say, I'm pleased with this. Uh, it worked, um, but there's a long way, there is a long way to go. Uh, and I, I wanted to work on this sort of detail aspect of uh, the face, getting the eyes right and uh, noses, mouths and things, and getting the, f the, just the structure of the face and really looking into it closely. Um, and uh, that, I, I managed to do that and be pleased with that, but there's all these little details that uh, I didn't really fully complete. So you can see me here thinking, actually, the back lighting's looking all right. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, let's get some rim light on the other side as well. So here's some with a different color. So we've got a green, blue, sci-fi look. Uh, it was a tiny bit dark, so I put a light around the front as well, but really low lit light around the front. At the moment, it's lit by the background, so the background's gray, and I turn that to black in the end. I'm just setting up my camera along the curve here as well. Thought I'd leave these bits in for once, um, so you can sort of see what I'm doing and I can talk them through. Um, but I will do more tutorials on these things uh, later. So you can see there, go on Evie, do your thing, <laughs> get a bit of blur, <laughs> get a bit of depth of field. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Uh, and it renders instantly. Oh, and there we go, the depth of field. And then uh, my focus point was my empty, uh, which was actually in the wrong place. It should be, your focus point should be on the eyes, all the, always on the eyes. Uh, but my eyes were a bit rubbish. So <laughs> um, not that I was thinking, don't focus on the eyes. I just uh, forgot to move my empty uh, in the end and already rendered it. Um, so there we go. Anyway, uh, there's the final piece. Uh, like I say, I'm fairly happy with it, but uh, lots missing and a bit of a hack at the end there with Evie. Uh, but it's got that melancholy mood. Um, it, it's a little bit glitchy, the EV render there, you can see. Uh, probably the depth of field and the blur and things, uh, but good fun. Anyway, the Discord server, I like this one, a bullfrog, clever stuff. Delight there, a cat on a heated mat. Uh, that uh, lion duck, crazy stuff. Uh, and a lizard frog. It, it, I like the <laughs> hybrid stuff. Uh, fish, Tyrannosaurus Rex or something that was. These are all brilliant, I'm loving it. Well done, Lyrum. Uh, nice for that. I love this one. Uh, the shape was just really nice. Uh, there's a griffin there, or cockatrice actually, isn't it? Uh, yeah, some nice work there. Hopefully you can see that, um, small details. Uh, excellent style, I'm going through these very quickly again. Uh, nice, nice frog, flying frog. They're, they're brilliant ideas. Uh, a tiny thump, which is really weird, but quite effective. And a cool scorpion there, uh, love it. Uh, oh, and a tiny ant, uh, 
really really nice work coming out here a shell empty shell they're thinking there. and yes there's the, the scorpion again but nicely rendered that one uh, so my favorites uh, i do like the flying, flying frog a lot of detail and effort gone into those wings love the shape of this uh, bunny fish and the delight was really good so well done there uh, so that's it for me thank you for watching and uh, thanks for all your comments support really appreciated thank you for uh, all the advice you're giving me as well uh, so uh, yeah thanks again and see you next time